Hi everybody, um, it's Abby. Uh, I finally finished taking out the braids. Oh my gosh, it took forever. Um, but now I'm going to really quickly put um, a hair mask in my hair. Um, I'm going to do the Argon um, Silk Argon Oil Silk Hair Mask from Skin Food. Um, this is just like the one-time packet. It's normally not enough for my entire head, so I do have the bigger one. Um, so I'll add additional um, to my hair, and then I'll put the cap on, and I will let that condition my hair. Um, so I'm going to cleanse my hair today, but I'm going to apply the henna tomorrow. So after I finish applying the mask, I will come back and I will show you guys exactly what I put in my henna and how to mix it. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Hey everybody, so it's me. I'm just talking to you about the products that we'll need. So there's the henna. I'm going to use 150 grams, which is not enough. I actually now realize that I need about 300 grams of henna for my hair. 250 um, would be ideal. Uh, I'm using a glass bowl and a wooden spoon. Also, I'm going to use lemons as the primary wetting agent. I like to use whole lemons instead of the uh, bottled lemon juice. I also have some coffee as well as some tea because I am ultimately trying to get my hair a really uh, rich brown. So I'm using coffee and tea to help add brown tones to my hair. If you don't have lemons, you can use um, orange juice or apple cider vinegar. Some people use water, um, but I like to use acids. I'm also going to use some honey. Um, it, act, it acts as a really good humectant for my hair. It keeps nice moisture with the henna and nice brown tones. Also going to be adding some tea tree oil uh, because it acts as it has a great dye release. And there will also be the use of some um, uh, castor oil because the castor oil is good for my um, nape and forehead to keep it from getting a stain. And I'll throw in a few drops of eucalyptus oil as well because it acts as a good terp just like the tea tree oil. They provide for good dye release. I've had good experiences with them in the past. And then there's argon oil that I will add, and I'm adding the argon oil simply because I absolutely love argon oil. And if you don't have argon oil, you can add olive oil. So next, I'm just reviewing what I'm going to use. So there's the henna, there's the honey, there's the coffee, tea tree oil, argon oil, and eucalyptus oil. So then I will open the henna. The henna was from a batch of May 2012. No, I'm sorry, from an April 2012 batch. And the reason I only have 150 milligrams is because that's all I have left and I didn't buy any more. And I realized it was time for another treatment, but um, it's going to work out fine. So then I will show you what it looks like once it's in the bowl. So that's what it looks like in the bowl. And then I will get ready to add the argon oil. So I'm just, there's no set amount. Just add whatever you like. I just add a little in there. And then I get my cutting board. I'm warming up my lemon and I'm going to roll it a bit on the board to help make it nice and juicy and then I will squeeze the lemon into a clean mug there's nothing else in the mug and just squeeze 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 you will find that fresh lemons work so much better than lemon juice I learned that the hard way about four years ago when I first started using henna so I'm gonna do one lemon at a time I'll add that lemon and I'll come back. So I'll pick this up so you can see. This is what one 
lemon looks like in the henna mixture. So now I'll start to stir. So it's clumped up after one mixture, after one lemon, this is what it looks like. Just like dry mud, like clay. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna roll my second lemon and squeeze it, remove some of the seeds, and then squeeze it and apply that to the bowl. And then once I do that, I will stir a little and then I will show you quickly what it looks like. Um, I'm fast forwarding this part because all I'm doing, guys, is literally chopping lemons, squeezing them into a cup, pouring them into the bowl. And then I will add some coffee at the end of this little fast forward seg segment. So this is the what third lemon. And I will add it. And then I will stir and I'll show you what it looks like. You want your henna to be a nice yogurt consistency. So then I'll add some honey at this point. Um, a quick note, you want your henna liquids to be warm because that helps with the dye release. But you don't want them to be really, really hot because that can ruin the dye. So I added a tablespoon of honey. That's what it looks like. And then I'm going to add the coffee. I use the organic drip coffee because I don't really drink coffee all that often. So there's no point for me to go out and buy some special coffee for this purpose. So I use that. It works fine. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like um, next. This is what you got see that still like pudding it's too thick it's like pudding okay so I'm just showing you that I'm adding some tea because I'm trying to get that yogurt consistency so again there's no measurement so nobody asked me how much I used just eye it and get a nice yogurt consistency I did not measure how much I just Continued to pour until I got a nice yogurt consistency. Then I'm going to add my um, essential oils. Once I get the consistency that I want, I'll add about maybe five to six drops of tea tree oil and maybe four drops of eucalyptus oil. And that will be the end of uh, the actual mixing process. So... There the goes the oils, and then I'll stir them, and then I'll come back, and we will wrap up the henna, and it'll be ready to sit so the dye can release. So, be back. Okay, so we're back, and we're in my laundry room, and so um, this is the test strand, and then this is the henna. So, I'm just going to let it sit here. This is really, really hot in here. So it'll sit here while I'm at work and I'm gonna close close the windows here so that um, it the air can't escape, the heat can't escape. So, and then I'll just slide, slide the doors. So, I just close the doors and we'll see I'm so hot. I'll see you guys when um, I get home from work and I will apply the henna. Bye. Okay, I'm back and all I'm doing is showing you my test um, my test strip, which you should always do a test strip if you um, you should just always do a test strip. <laughs> That's just it. I don't have anything else to say about that. You may end up with a color you don't want. Now I'm opening the bag of henna and I'll come and show you exactly what it looks like up close and personal. See, 
see this die release amazing die release so we'll like take this crust off is what you want to do take the crust off the top and do you see this brown beautiful brown do you see it looks almost like chocolate pudding right beautiful beautiful brown and it's actually not that um, I'll stir it so you guys can see I'll get that nice get all that dye in there So I don't really need to, I had some standby tea, but it actually didn't stiffen up that much. I will add just a little tea to um, get it back to a nice runny, but not like super runny consistency. But I hope you guys can, I hope this lighting is pretty good where you guys can see this beautiful brown beautiful brown that I have here okay guys this is it I mean this is the consistency I wanted I had a nice dye release now my hair will not be the color of that brown but it will be a nice brown hope you enjoyed leave any questions